that was some very beautiful music featuring the cornetto from an album called La Minuta featuring the wonderful cornetto player Bruce Dickey, who you'll get to hear this weekend, uh, tomorrow, a Friday night, I'm getting ahead of myself, and Saturday night <laughs> at Camerata Nova. Hello, everyone. It is seven minutes after 12 o'clock. This is Intermezzo on Winnipeg's Classic 107, and I'm your host, Claudia Garcia de la Huerta. I'm so glad you've joined me at this moment because I'm welcoming to the studio Bruce Dickey and John Weens, who is the curator and conductor for the concert this weekend. Welcome to you both. Thank Thank you. That was beautiful, Bruce. Uh, Tell me about that piece of music and this recording. This uh, this recording is called La Bella Minuta, which doesn't refer to minutes, but rather to diminutions, which were a kind of ornamentation style, very quick moving notes that break up long, longer notes into many faster ones. And this particular piece is a piece for, for, well, we don't really know, either for organ or for perhaps a string ensemble. And I think one of the wonderful things about playing the cornetto is to take a piece like that and play the top line and let the, the bottom parts be played on an organ or on string instruments. In this case, it was three vials and a harp. Um, so that the cornetto sort of becomes a part of the organ or a part of mm. the ensemble. It's not so much solo music, I think, as ensemble music where the cornetto um, is is integrated into the ensemble and then ornaments on the top line. It's one of my favorite things to do. Welcome to Winnipeg. <laughs> Thank you. You've come to us via <coughs> Halifax and Montreal, but you live in Italy, which is where this album was recorded. That's right. For people that aren't familiar with the cornetto, can you describe what the instrument is and where it comes from? Yeah, it, the cornetto is a simple wooden horn, um, which evolved out of animal horns that were played throughout the Middle Ages for first for signaling or, or for religious functions like the shofar in the Jewish uh, rites. Um, then at a certain point, finger holes were made in, into the horn, and it became a sort of folk instrument. And eventually, by around 1500, they began making these instruments out of wood or ivory, so they could control more precisely the dimensions, and the instrument could overblow and play chromatically. And then very quickly it became the most important treble wind instrument and in some ways the most important treble instrument of the 16th century. And how did you come to pick it up? (laughs) Well, I came in a kind of circuitous way. I I was a trumpet player in in school and went to university in Indiana to study the trumpet. Got sort of more interested in early music there and began playing woodwind instruments, the recorder, and other reed instruments and so forth. And But sort of made a circle around the cornetto because I thought it was too difficult and too disruptive to my trumpet play. <laughs> <laughs> when I finally left my trumpet, left the trumpet behind me, um, I picked up the cornetto and discovered that I had the right skill set for that. I had the, the embouchure technique, uh, the lips, and the finger and tongue technique from woodwinds and I was at the right place in Basel, Switzerland at the time where there was there were people giving me lots of information about repertoire and things and performance practice and I was at the right place at the right time and the whole thing kind of exploded. That was a long time ago. I then taught the instrument in Basel at the Scola Cantorum Basiliensis for 40 years and retired three years ago. Well, did you start when you were eight or what? <laughs> well, I'm, maybe I'm older than you think I am. <laughs> <laughs> I started when I was 27, actually. <laughs> now, it's it's a is it a difficult instrument to play? Because John, right before we went yeah. on air, you were talking to Bruce uh, uh, some of the things that you noticed during rehearsal. It has the reputation of partially um, uh, well founded and partially not of being a very difficult instrument. It was always thought to be a very difficult instrument in the periods of time when it was probably not so well played. So the, in the 18th century, the 19th century, everyone talks about how difficult it was. And it is difficult, but the difficulty has gotten a little bit exaggerated in the 20th century or 21st century because people came to the instrument. The instrument had no playing tradition that survived, 
People came to the instrument with inappropriate equipment, big mouthpieces that don't work well. And so they created all sorts of difficulties that aren't really inherent in the instrument. Although it, it is difficult because, um, as compared to a brass instrument, the, um, the tube is so short, mm -hmm. you know, six inches, nine inches long rather than eight feet for a trumpet. That means that when you blow a note <clears throat> into the instrument, uh, it doesn't have so much resonating um, capacity to, to, to uh, stabilize the pitch. But pretty great but to travel that's, with. But that's, well, that's true. <laughs> but it's also great because it gives you more control over right. the way the sound develops and the, and the tuning and so forth. So it's a double-edged sword. So, John Weens, I'll bring you into the conversation. How did you come to connect with Bruce? Friends. <laughs> Luckily for me, I have lots and lots of friends who uh, perform plenty of early music in Canada on a very regular basis, and I just heard through the grapevine from one of them that Bruce was going to be in Canada at this certain period in time, and so I, uh, I guess... I guess I swallowed hard and made an inquiry about whether Bruce might come to Winnipeg, and luckily for all of us, he's here. <laughs> so how did the show come about? What were you trying to, you know, put together? Oh, this is a, uh, to me, listening to Cornetti is one of the uh, most pleasing things that I can do in my life. Uh, ever since I've heard the instrument played the first time, I've been completely in love with it. And a few years ago, we had Matthew Jenajon here. Mm, I remember playing, that. Playing uh, a bunch of Gabrielli with us. Who made some and of my instruments, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> That's really? Right. That's right. And uh, yes, and so this is, this is all about uh, the cornetto and relating it to, um, to voices and getting to know its repertoire more intimately. And also, I think... Uh, the practice of diminutions, which I think is something that we don't get to hear live particularly often, and I think is an incredibly important tradition, especially when you relate it to pieces that perhaps a choir might sing, mm. and then you remove the choir from it, you put a couple of instruments on it, and you let a cornetto, a cornetto solo on the top. It's, it's one of the most miraculous and beautiful things that I know, but it's incredibly rare to be able to hear it live. And so when this opportunity presented itself, I just thought this was an incredible opportunity, not just for musical pleasure, but for learning and for really getting to uh, know not just the instrument, but how the instrument is uh, 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 placed in certain different styles of repertoire. So, you know, Bruce will play with the, qu the choir Bruce will also play with uh, a soprano soloist, Dana Lamoth, and he'll also play some pieces with just him and the continuo team, and it's, it's all incredible music. So worthwhile. Tell us about some of the composers you've picked for the, the concert. Well, I mean, I think some of the names are, are names that people will know very well, like Palestrina and Gabrielli and probably Johann Hermann Schein. But Bruce is playing a series of pieces by composers who don't have as much of the limelight, certainly in North America, uh, as they probably deserve. Bruce, would you tell us a bit about a few of those? <laughs> well, one of them is um, was a cornetto player, actually, in Bologna, where the city in which I live. Uh, his name is Ascanio Trombetti. Trombetti means, you know, trumpet player. So he, he was from a family of, of wind players. Um, but he was a cornetto player and was known most commonly as Ascanio del Cornetto, so Ascanio of the Cornetto, and was um, one of the great cornetto players in Italy in the mid-16th century. <clears throat> he also published a, a collection of motets for from, f I think, five to 12 voices, which are absolutely gorgeous. And so I'll be playing one of these uh, five-part motets and I like to imagine that if he played it to the accompaniment of an organ, that he would have improvised um, a, a, a passage of the di divisions or uh, diminutions, as they're called, uh, on, on the piece. 
And so I've constructed a, a possible version that would have been like his version. Uh, we're also playing a couple of pieces, or one piece by uh, a Milanese organist named Giovanni Paolo Cima. Oh, we uh, played Cima quite a bit here on the air. Well, I, probably because in his collection of, of motets, of which we're going to play one, uh, he included some instrumental pieces, and one of the instrumental pieces is the first violin piece to be called a sonata. Mm-hmm. So that's become quite famous for that reason. But I, the vocal music is also quite um, wonderful. <clears throat> and uh, we're playing another piece by a composer who's become known as Carlo G. <laughs> <laughs> and that's because his music was discovered about 15 years ago in a manuscript in a flea market in Vienna. And this manuscript, which uh, took uh, 15, 10, 15 years for people to realize how important it was, but it has, it's a manuscript that he made for his own use, and it doesn't have a title page or anything. On the first page, which is a list of the pieces that it contains, there's a, a note at the top, um, music uh, uh, collected by Carlo G., and then there's a big smudge. Oh. <laughs> so we don't know what his name was, although... There has been uh, mus- there are musicologists who think uh, are pretty sure that it was grat, G R A T something smudge. So then there's speculation that it's Graziani because there was a composer in Rome at that time around 1600 named Carlo Graziani, but not a very well known composer. And this is a very important collection of very highly florid, um, highly ornamented vocal solos and duets. So we're going to, some of them have violin, so we're going to do one of those, and I'm playing the violin Oh, part. lovely. <coughs> well, it sounds like an incredible concert, and you'll also be performing a, an original piece by Andrew Belfort? Oh, yes. We're doing a set of Andrew's, um, well, my favorite uh, Christmas-themed music by Andrew. So there's uh, Gabriel's Message and the Coventry Carol, which I think everybody probably knows as Luli Lula. <laughs> and uh, and mm-hmm. uh, also Rosa Mystica, which I think is uh, one of Andrew's, uh, well, one of my favorite pieces of Andrew's, and certainly I feel like it's an incredibly uh, well-constructed and beautiful piece. Well, it sounds uh, like it's going to be a fantastic concert. Where can people get tickets and all of that good stuff? Oh, McNally. I think they can get them at McNally, and I think they can get them directly on the website for Camerata Nova. And at the door. And at the door. Of course, at the door. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thank you two for coming and, and giving us a bit of a preview of what uh, people can expect at the concert uh, Friday night and Saturday night at Crescent Fort Rouge United Church. Um, as John said, you can go uh, to camaradanova.com uh, for tickets or you can get them at the door. They range from $15 uh, for people under 30 years old to $30 uh, for regular tickets, $25 for seniors. Um, so nice to meet you, Bruce. I love meeting uh, early music artists because uh, they're just <clears throat> such un- unique music, unique instruments. And I love hearing about how they come to get their hands on these instruments and how their love grows for uh, this kind of music. Um, we're going to leave with one more piece of music from mm-hmm. your beautiful album, La Bella Minuta. What are we going to listen to? Well, one of the things that Cornetti were famous for doing better than any other instrumentalist was imitating the human voice. So this is a a very uh, highly ornamented motet by um, Luzasco Luzaski, who was the the, uh, chapel master in Ferrara at the court. And it's written for a soprano voice with um, a bass, a basso continuo. And in this case, it's a harp playing the, the basso continuo. And I'm playing the vocal divisions, trying to be as vocal as possible. All right, so this is called O Prima Vera. That's right. Uh, featuring Bruce Dickey on the cornetto. 